Welcome, welcome, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Let us know in the comments uh, if you do the Cinco de Mayo thing. My, we were married on the 5th of May, so it's like we've, we've got to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, Thursday is Cinco de Mayo. So what do you do for that? I don't know. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's a traditionally... And I don't even know if it's authentically a Mexican holiday because when we go to Mexico, they all say like, we don't even acknowledge that. But mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like, you know, you go get some fajitas, I guess, and you know. Yeah, I mean, Christy says you're supposed to drink margaritas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's Randy saying? Oh, uh, selling the product? I'll be, I'll be at a conference selling the product. Love it. See you, Randy. Well, everyone, it's one after, so we're gonna get uh, rocking and rolling. And I want to get, I wanted to share a quick, quick testimonial about really why we did the Noble Alliance. And we met uh, the three, maybe Frank was there, three, four, four, uh, four of us a couple of weeks ago, and we were putting together the call that Danny went over his um, morning routine. Well, from that call, because we never really dove into that, the four of us, but uh, we kind of talked about it. From that call, I started to implement some of the things that we talked about from that call about is mainly getting up early and creating a routine. And I've always had a morning routine. It just wasn't solid. And since I've started to do that, wow, I have probably gained five hours more of productivity. Um, I'm sharper. I'm getting way more done during the day just from that one call. So that really kind of demonstrated to me like why we did the NOPO Alliance. Um, it, it was almost like, wow, we're seeing so much benefit from these discussions ourselves about implementing these things that we really want to share these with other people. So uh, it's all about the implementation, but continue to, to share the alliance with people that you think would get value from this, that you think are implementers, action takers, not action fakers. They're actually going to take the knowledge that they're getting and apply it to their life. Um, and again, I just got, that was kind of cool. I was on a Noble Alliance call about a subject that we talked about. Uh, rolling out, I implemented it and it immediately paid off. Not next month, next year, it immediately is, is paying off. So pretty awesome. Uh, today we get the, um, today's going to be a blessing. Uh, Michael is probably one of the fastest growing, growing entrepreneurs that I know. And what's always strike out about him with myself is his ability to keep his eye on the ball and his ability to not just set goals, like last, last week we talked about goals and values. He sets goals that are very much in alignment. He doesn't shoot too low, but he also doesn't shoot goals that are like nonsensical either. And I think that's a, a really, really good value, a good gift that he's going to be sharing with us, uh, with us today. Because I've, I've, I've known people that they just, they're not really good goal setters. So if you haven't done your value ladder, do that from last weekend and Michael, I want to know, man. I want to know what the secret sauce is to setting goals because you and your team are goal crushers, dude. Just crushers. How do you do that, man? Yeah, well, I appreciate that, Jesse. It's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not really, um, it's an ability that everybody has and it just needs to be, it just needs to be stoked or cultivated really, um, you know, in order to, 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 you know, really, I guess, bring out those skills and everybody has the ability to set goals. What it really boils down to at the end of the day is, is discipline and, and, you know, the, the grit or the fortitude to actually want to accomplish the goal. Um, and that's, that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So I want you guys to, to think about something. Uh, I was, I was on my, my, my evening uh, walk here a little bit ago. So I'm, I'm in the middle of the, the, well, not in the middle, I'm in the beginning of the 75 hard challenge right now. And I was on the walk and I was thinking, what could I say to these guys tonight that that may may have a lasting effect with them that may they may really be able to take something away from this. And I, I want you guys just for a second to, to think about something. Um, there's there's two scenarios here. I could be talking to a group of of you all here who are free, uh, who are free to do literally whatever you want to do. So whatever I take away, whatever I give to you tonight and you take away, you can immediately implement. You can immediately start applying it to your life. Imagine, imagine 
the people guys think about people that are in that are in prisons and jails and things okay and they're there for a long time and somebody somebody comes and talks to them and they they want to they they want to try and inspire someone think about the inability that those people have to actually implement a change or think about people that are that that are just really struggling uh with their health or 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 they're struggling they're they're just there's, there's something going on in their life that's really, really difficult, and they just don't have the ability to walk away with, with actionable information and make a change. You guys are all here. A, you're special because you're here. You're, you're, you're interested in yourselves and your development, but you all have the ability right now to walk away from this and apply what we're giving you to your life and to actually make a significant improvement to go from 70% to 120% to, to, to take your productivity levels or your goal setting abilities and to actually apply them right away. You have a, you have an opportunity that most, a lot of people don't get or don't have. Okay. And, and I think people take this for granted. People take for granted the fact that they really have an opportunity to take something they hear in the current the current point in their life and actually apply it and make a difference. And, and people are like, I don't know. They just forget that. It's like, they forget that they, they have the ability to do that. So I want you to think about that tonight. As I'm talking, you can take what I'm saying right now and literally start doing it as soon as the call's over. And, and Jesse, you kind of asked about in the beginning, you said, Hey, you know, your team, they're, they're goal crushers. How do they do it? And, right. and, and dude, it's, it's because, we are, we, there's a, we operate with a sense of urgency and it is, it is, it is, what can we do right now to apply what we've talked about at any given point in time and make it better? Dude, I got to ask you, how do you implement that? That's my, my word of, I was going to say the month, but of April, I've been talking about urgency for a while now, man. And it's like, it's just so elusive. Like I, I, I feel like I operate in urgency but I feel like I'm literally the only one in the world. And of course I know that's ridiculous, but how do you, how do you create a culture of urgency? That's a great question. It's a great question. And it boils down to people figuring out what it is exactly that they want, man. It's, it's what do you want, you know, and, 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 and how important is it to you? Uh, because you're going to find, I find that people uh, that don't act quickly or don't, don't take a sense of urgency of things. They don't really want it that bad. It's like, I don't know. It's not that, it's not that big of a deal. I'll get to it when I get to it, but you know, like dude, for me, okay. Uh, about a month and a half ago. And I, when I, when I, when I traded up and, and got the vet, right. I texted the guy at six 30 in the morning, the guy texted me back, found a car, had it cleaned up and ready by nine 30 in the morning. I was at the dealer by lunch and drove it home that evening. Right. And, and so it's because he wanted to sell it to me and I wanted to buy it boom, bam, done. Like right. no screwing around. Right. Like, right. He wanted it. I wanted it done. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So I, I think it's a sense of, of, of what we want. And that's kind of, that's how I want to lead into this guys is, is, is how do we set goals, but how do we establish what we want while, while setting them? You know what I mean? So, and Jesse intervene anytime. Uh, yeah. yeah. You got anything, dudes. I'm going to, I'm going to share the screen here and, uh, and bring it on. Let's see here. Oh, you know what it's telling me to do. Yeah, that word, that word urgency is, I mean, life isn't guaranteed tomorrow, man. No, not at all. And, and, and you know, I'm not trying to be physical, philosophical. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should get some urgency on my vocabulary. Uh, you know what I mean? But, but that's true. And I just... I, I really want to help inspire people to live in the moment, to be decisive. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Yep. All right. Can you see it? Uh, I see, we see your screen. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Can you see this now? Bam. Yes. All right. Awesome. So, so guys, let, let's talk about this and, and ask questions. If you guys have questions, pop them in anytime in the chat and the Q&A. But I want to talk to you tonight. Um, just about setting obtainable goals. And then once you, once you accomplish those, uh, creating some momentum. And so I, I want you to, to take, take note of, there are so many people that, that just don't set goals. Um, they, and I, I talk to people and they're like, they don't set them and they don't even know how to set them and they've never really had any. 
And it's, it's, it's really common. You would be surprised how many people don't actually write, just write down or have a specific goal. Um, I, would, I would say if someone challenged me, I would say 97% of society does not write goals down. It may even be more than that. Uh, there are, there's basically 2% of us who are going to end up being elite or being high performing individuals. That's just the statistics. Those are the facts. And so most people don't, they just don't. Um, and so I want to reveal to you how, and the power of just, just writing it out. There's so much power in just writing something down. Okay. And, and this is, this is big. All right. This is a, this is a life-changing call for you tonight. I'm just telling you right now, if you can take what I'm going to tell you tonight and apply it, your life in six months from now is going to be totally different. I can guarantee that. So goal setting provides a roadmap of where we need to go, right? It also goal setters uh, see future potential in the overall big picture. And what that means is, is they're able to look at something or someone or themselves even and go, <clears throat> that's not really what I want. I'd rather, I'd rather see this or have that. You know, I'd rather look this way instead of that way. Um, it's kind of the way we set out the, in, the, the beginning of the year with this, with this physical alterating uh, lifestyle change of mind. You know, I'm just watching my macros and working out and trying to, trying to change. I know how I want my body to look. So every day I work towards making it look that way. Mm. It takes time. But I, I have the vision. I, I literally visual, I obsess over that vision every day of how I want to look and feel, right? Research, multiple research articles uh, has, have established that a strong connection between, there's a strong connection between goal setting and success. Um, a lot of people that set goals uh, tend to just be more successful. It's, it's, it's really a proven fact. It's proven research. It's proven science that, that people that set goals they just, they're more successful, you know? Um, and studies show that when we train our mind to think about what we want and work towards reaching it, the brain rewires itself to acquire the ideal self-image and make it an essential part of our identity. That's the RAS I have at the top. It's the reticular activating system that we talk about all the time. It's, it's rewiring our, our thought process, like, you know, okay, I, this is how I want my marriage to look. So I'm going to read a marriage book. I'm going to watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, uh, go to whatever I'm going to do. I'm going to visualize my marriage being peaceful, being, uh, there's, there's, a, there's love going on. There's respect, there's communication, there's trust, there's sex, there's everything going on that is important in a marriage. And I visualize that. And then I just start obsessing over it. And I know, Jesse, a lot of that stuff is very, very important to, to Erica and you guys. I mean, yeah. uh, and it's just, it's not only, it's not only doing it, but you guys talk about it publicly. Yeah, yeah. It, because we want to keep it to the forefront of our mind. And I love what you're saying, because Danny said the same thing, I think, a couple of calls ago, as far as visualization. Yes. Yep. And I think when you can create the picture in your head, but then also talk about it, amongst other individuals, it now makes it the norm. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It now makes like what you're obtaining, like the norm. And that's going to make you get it to, to meet a lot quicker than yeah. just keeping it, you know, to yourself. Yeah. It, it, there's just so much power about just saying something, just speaking it into existence. The, guys, the universe just knows. I know every time I, I have a call with you guys, I always feel like I'm talking about the universe. You guys probably think I'm a nutball. But I'm serious. The, the universe knows, it hears you, it reacts, it responds, and it just knows. So just trust me with that, okay? So the, the ABCs of goals, how do, how do, we, how do we set a goal? What, what, what do we need to look for in goal setting? Like, what, how do we formulate what to write down? Well, listen, these goals at the end of the day, you have to be able to obtain them but they have to also stretch you. Listen to me when I say this, I'm going to say it twice. They have to make you a little bit uncomfortable. Do you know anybody in your life that is a, a highly successful person that's pretty comfortable? 
Do you know someone that's just like, oh, I just, I'm so comfortable. I, I eat pizza and I just, I work six hours a day and, you know, and I play PlayStation at night. I watch Netflix. I go on errands and run around town with my wife and my husband. I don't really do a lot. I, uh, but I'm highly, highly successful. I don't know anyone like that personally. A lot of the guys I know that are killing it are, are a lot of the times in very uncomfortable situations, whether it's on the phone in a sales process, cold calling, whether it's working long hours or working on themselves physically or spiritually or mentally, um, it creates, a, a, they get out of their comfort zone. And, and guys, from a spiritual standpoint, being in your comfort zone is actually a sin. You should not, you, you, sh you, sh you really should always be challenging yourself to get uncomfortable and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So when I say setting goals that, that are obtainable, they also need to make you a little uneasy. You need to be sitting on the edge of your seat a little bit because it's going to challenge you. It's going to change you. Okay. So the ABCs of goals, you can find this stuff anywhere. I, I've, I've, you know, looked at this type of stuff as a principle for many, many years. Um, I'm going on 12 years in entrepreneurship. This is something I've, I've just lived by for a long time. Uh, but it's, they're achievable, they're believable, and you're committed to doing them. And, and when those three things happen, when you, when, when you can't, like, you can't set a goal to say, I want to be a millionaire by June, you know, if, if you're not anywhere close. I mean, if you make 80 grand a year and you want to be a millionaire in a month, it's not going to happen, you know, uh, but, but if you, if you are making, if your business is making 10,000 a month and you want to make 12,000 a month in, in, in two months, that's an achievable goal. Okay. And you have to believe in yourself that you're able to do it. See, the neat thing about goals is goals really, uh, they're going to reveal our strengths and our weaknesses. You know, we're going to be able to go, okay, um, I, I want to increase my sales to 15,000, but I'm actually not a very good salesperson. So, so I need to work on becoming a better salesperson. So my goal, my action step would be listen to a, a sales process podcast, you know, subscribe to a sales training platform. That's, that's, a, that's an achievable, right? Believable goal to get you to that end goal of increasing your sales. I love what Tony Robbins says, man. He says, setting goals is the first step from turning invisible to visible. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's basically like something you're, that you can't really imagine having. And then, and then you're, you're turning that into reality. Like for example, um, for, for my organization, my company, the amount of revenue that we did last month alone was more than we did in the first four years of being in business in one month. And I could have, if you would have asked me this four or five years ago, I would have, I would have, I would have never believed it. And I've been like, there's just no way. I, I mean, that's, those are cool numbers. It's great. It's neat to think about. It's great numbers. There's just no way we could do that kind of revenue. And, and because of small daily committed processes of, of making the invisible visible, literally weekly right. meetings every week for years with my team, uh, getting them and myself to believe in the vision uh, is, is a huge deal. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. About that, Jesse? You know, Michael, you mentioned about Eric and I talking about our goals, our relationship goals. And you're right. We do talk about that frequently because to me, that makes it real and when you speak something into existence, there's also an accountability. Other people hear this. And that, that's why we do it. We want people to know so that they can help hold us accountable. Yes. You know, yes. so every single day. And I think a lot of times people become like goal hoarders. They, 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 they set their goals. They might even write their goals down. But when it talks about pay, taking them public, nobody wants to take their goals public. And I think that really is what makes them even more visible. Yes. You yes. know. I agree with that. That's, that's really good. Um, and, and, and I think it's, it's just so important to be around like-minded synergetic people, Jesse, where we, we get together once a week and we, we literally round table this stuff and we talk right. about it and we, we encourage each other, we empower each other. And we, we, we have growth driven conversations. You know, we're not sitting around going, Hey, did you hear about Bob down the road? <laughs> you know, uh, no, it's, it does. Who cares? We don't care about Bob. You know, we care about how's Jesse getting better. How's Danny getting better? How, how are we moving the needle in our right. lives? You right. know, we, we don't sit around and, and, and drink beer and, 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 and sound like a bunch of quacks, you know, <laughs> it's purpose driven growth. And that's, that's the noble alliance.
it's per, I mean, that's what we sit around and talk about. So it's important to, to get yourself around those kinds of people. Yeah. And I think by doing that, it gets you, um, Tony Robbins talks about uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And there's some people that they live out of necessity. So as long as their needs are met, they're good. That, that's, they're comfortable. So, so they're necessity driven. All right. You, you, I had parents that talked about that. As long as my needs, I don't need any more than my needs. Okay. They were necessity driven. And then you have people that are driven out of possibility. Well, a good dr drill to do, because I was very necessity driven for a while because of the environment that I grew up in. A good drill to do is instead of looking at goals as like, hey, I want this outcome, or I want to make this money, or I want to have this amount of intimacy, all fine goals, by the way, um, look at it as what type of person do I have to become to make this kind of money? What type of person, what type of husband do I got to be to have intimacy triple the amount of times that we're having right now? I've got to become a certain per people. It's not just going to happen. We're not just going to talk about it around the campfire and it happens. I've got to now think, okay, well, you probably need to be more attentive. You probably need to work on that. Maybe you need to get back into counseling. You know, there's a, a lot of other ideas. So when you think out of possibility, don't just think of like, hey, I'm trying to gain this for me. Think of what type of person you need to become. And then what type of person does that, the person you became, what does he or she do for the world? Yes. You know, because I, I'll tell you what, people that are necessity driven, they're able to impl influence like a little bit little bit they are not they are not using their gifts and talents to really benefit the world thousand percent that's gold i love that nls is that what she said uh nlp neuro linguistic programming we should probably do a, we'll do a call on it one day that's fascinating stuff that's yeah great. some people are just necessity driven and some people are possibility driven yes dude i love it i love it because i dude i just I don't ever think about what I need. I always think about way more. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I, 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 I right. Whatever. I mean, well, you, know. you, you kind of mentioned it when uh, uh, the first of the year, you were like, you visioned the body that you wanted. Yes. That, that's, that's a, that's a possibility. Yes. You weren't like, Oh, I don't know. I'm getting older now. Or the, you, you weren't just living in necessity. So that visualization is, is, is huge for living a life of possibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so guys, as we continue kind of looking out how to set these goals and, 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 and move forward with this, uh, I do think it's interesting that studies have shown that the more we align our core values and principles, the more likely we are to benefit from our plans, which is kind of like what you just said, Jesse, it's like you, you, you have to be the person you are really is going to align with the potential of the, 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 the plan and the goal. You know, if, if right. you're, kind of, if you're kind of like a, a scumbag or kind of like a jerk or a dishonest person or, and you, you don't really operate uh, morally or ethically, um, you're, you're going to find that a lot of things that you do just don't really work out for you. Uh, they right. may work out short term, but they don't really, they're not really going to be any type of, type of lasting uh, success. Yeah. Michael, we talked about values last week and it, oh man, it was good stuff. But if you value comfort more than risk or more than opportunity, and you're trying to set goals that are going to move you into opportunity, but you value comfort more than that, that's a conflict. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, very, very interesting. So guys, I don't know if you've heard of this. Again, this has been around for a long time, but this is gold and it's smart goals. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a little add on to that. I like to add the smarter goals, um, but they all stand that the, the, the S is the M, the A, the R, the T, it all has meanings. Um, so you're setting specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound goals that are ethical and follow professional and personal ethics and that are rewarding at the end of the day. Mm. Okay. So this is a, this is a series of how you're going to set a goal. It has to be specific. Okay. So I weigh 225 pounds. I want to weigh 200 pounds. Okay. That's the measurement. I want to lose 25 pounds, right? It's obtainable by going to the gym and eating correctly. All right. It's realistic because people do it all the time. Everybody, there's, there's all kinds of people that lose 25 pounds. It's not that big of a deal. There's a time bound goal to it because there's a certain amount of time where I want to reach this weight, right? 
I would like to be 200 pounds by the time I'm 35 years old, which is June 13th. And I'm getting close, guys. I'm getting close. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here, but I'm working hard. Um, but I'm following professional and personal and personal ethics. And what that means is just, just, just don't, don't be a, just don't be a, a freaking a loser. You know, just, just, just be a good person. Do what you say you're going to do. Mean what you say. Uh, treat people with respect. Give the glory to God and just act the way you should act. Don't be a knucklehead. Okay. That's what that means. And people don't understand that. Well, Michael, why does it, uh, who cares if I'm morally and, and professionally, you know, ethic when I, when I, the way I carry myself, well, guess what the universe does. Okay. So we get back to this, this universe talk. It sees that you're basically just a, just a freaking knucklehead. And it's like, yeah, I don't really like this guy. Uh, the fa I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm kind of turn. I don't really like it. I'm going to kind of turn the favor away. You know, right. I'm, this, this right. person, you're not going to get the deals to fall in your lap. You're not going to come across the guy that's going to, to make out a meal plan for you and, and, and work out your whole macros, you know, and, and all this other stuff. It's the world just knows. Okay. If you're the jealous type, if you see people winning and they're successful and they're really getting after it and you're like, Oh, I wonder what that guy's doing. He's got to be screwing somebody over, you know, the universe just knows that you're, you're kind of a, you're just kind of a knucklehead when it comes to that. So, so, so be professional and have, have, have a, a value system that you, that you stand by in your goal setting process. Okay. Yeah. I think a big thing with, uh, with that is like the law of attraction. Yes. And ask Absolutely. yourself, when you see people winning, if it, if it doesn't put an emotional response of joy of, oh my gosh, I want to I want to send them a Facebook message and tell them great job. I want to nickel or, you know, fist bump them or, or <laughs> ask yourself why, why do you not want to see other human beings win? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a problem. You shouldn't be feeling that way. You know, you, and, and you can change that. You can, you can change the way you view those things. Okay. And the last part of this is the reward process. Guys, you got to reward yourselves. You got to pat yourself on the back, take yourself out, you know, make sure you're guys reward yourself. Okay. And, 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 and treat yourself to your hard work and your new identity. And, and listen, the reward involves discipline. And what I mean by this is if I get to 200 pounds and I want to go out and smash a cake and a pizza and, and, and I get back to my old habits, that's not rewarding. That's called being right. stupid. Right. That's what happens. It's like, oh, well, that, that was really dumb. I shouldn't have done that. Um, reward yourself and also in a disciplined process. Don't take your, you're just gonna, you're just gonna take two steps back when you, when you, when you make silly decisions like that. Okay. It's like, oh, I'm gonna reward myself. I'm gonna go throw six thousand dollar watch on my credit card. Well, that's dumb. You don't need to put, you know what I mean? So be smart in your reward process. A lot of people think that means just go out and get crazy. It doesn't, it shouldn't. Don't take your eye off the ball ever. Don't ever take your eye off the ball. Never Michael, can you speak to the reward a little bit more? Because, you know, you're, you're on this, this health journey and you're crushing it. But, you know, I've been out with you and Christy and you still are able to, you're still enjoying life, you know, and, and the flavors of life. You're still enjoying foods and whatnot. So how, how would you deeper describe like rewarding yourself with discipline? I love that. I just wrote that down. Reward yourself with discipline. Yeah. If, if I'm someone that's like, you know, I, I want to set these goals. I'm willing to go through a season of just, you know, delayed gratification. Any idea or any tips that you would give to kind of set rewards, but rewards that don't set you back, you know? Yeah, that's a, an excellent question. And, 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 a, and a great example of that is, I, I, you know, tracking everything I put into my body. You know, I'm, 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 I know that, okay, it's Friday and it's date night. So most Fridays, guys, I don't eat until dinner. I just, I just don't eat. I'll drink my water. I'll have a coffee, but I'm, yeah, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm disciplining myself for the evening. And then I've got 2,300 calories. I can, I can eat up in six hours, you know, from 6 PM to midnight, I'm smashing it, man. You know, and it, but as long as I know I'm, I'm not blowing it out of the water, I've, I've disciplined myself to, to, you know, try to uh, stay within the bounds of, of the plan. And not, so you, not, so you, what I'm hearing is you plan the reward. A thousand percent. Dude, I love that. That's, I, I think that's a key takeaway. 
Absolutely. And I, I think I have it as one maybe at the end. So it might be good. It might work out good. Uh, but definitely plan your reward. You know, think it out. It's like, you know, uh, it, it's it's so important that, that that you remember that, guys, life's short. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to go through life just being this miserable goal setting, accomplishing uh, robot that never does anything with anything that they do good with. Uh, but you also don't want to be an idiot at the same time. <laughs> Okay. So that's the, that's the key there. So, so smart goals, set, set the smart goals. Okay. Uh, the smarter goals. So the EEE model of, of goal setting, um, this has been around since the 1970s and the EEE model of goal setting is enlighten, encourage, and enable. And it's, it's just basically the, it's the, it's the three key methods to, to setting up these goals and it kind of wraps up into how we're going to do that. Uh, the enlightened, it provides insight to the goal. It provides in insight to our strengths and our weaknesses. It gives us knowledge of what we want to achieve. Um, and then it allows us to prioritize our goals by looking at that. Okay. Encouragement, you know, that's just, that, you know what that is. It's, it's motivation, boosting confidence and, and giving the courage needed to, to execute plans. All right. Um, and that's going to come by the people that you surround yourself with. Okay, that, that's, that's such a crucial component to goals is being around the right people. Okay, because there's so many times where I could tell, listen, I'm going to tell you, my mom, okay, my mom is, is, is a prime example of this. I love my mom, but I'll call her, you know, we'll have a conversation and, and we'll be talking about work and be talking about uh, getting a, you know, I wanted to get my, my Corvette and whatever. And well, Michael, you know, you just got to pay those bills and, and, you know, you know, yeah, you just, you got to go to work. You work for that weekend. And, uh, you know, sometimes work just sucks and, you know, you just got to, you got to work through it. And, and, uh, and you're not always going to get the things you want in life, but as long as you get food on the table and keep a roof over your head, things are going to be just fine. And it's like, when I hear someone talk like that, I cannot tell you how quickly disengaged I become. Right. I don't even hear it. I just am like, okay, well, I got to go. It was nice talking to you. Um, I don't, I don't entertain it. I don't bring it in. I don't believe in it. I don't associate with it. I don't even think about it. Okay. I do not associate with people who do not empower me. Right. Period. I don't care if they've been a friend for 15 years. They're not my friend anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're, just, I, they're gone. Yeah, Cause I yeah. think a goal can be very fragile when it's first planted in your mind. Yeah. And who, literally who you're telling that goal to could either shatter it yeah. or nourish it. A thousand percent. I mean, young entrepreneurs, I know there's a few of you on here. Your buddies are probably going, oh, yeah, man, you know, good luck with that. You're going to fall flat on your face. How the, how the hell are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to yeah. eat? Get them out, fire them, eliminate them. They are not encouraging you to execute your plan. Okay. You will not, I'm telling you, you won't go anywhere with people like that in your life. You won't. They're, that elevator is going down, baby, and you're going with it. It's not going up, okay? And, and, and it may be hard for people to understand. Relatives, family, friends, cousins, brothers, sisters, doesn't matter. You have to become unreasonable with that stuff in your life. Do not entertain it. I can't say that enough, all right? Uh, and enable, you know, Building our skills, enhancing our perception, our efficiency, and helps in implementing plans. Listen, that's what I meant by going back in, in, in the beginning of a few slides ago is, is making sure to achieve a goal, we may have to build skills along the way to achieve it, okay? Um, we may have to learn how to make sales calls or how to close a sale, we may have to learn how to become better leaders. We may have to learn how to communicate. Some people go, well, my wife and I, we just don't communicate. Oh, well, yeah, you know why? It's because you don't know freaking how to. Mm -hmm. So learn how to do it. Learn how to, learn how to communicate with people. Take a course, read a book, watch a podcast, listen to whatever. Whatever you got to do, learn it. And then once you learn how to do it, guess what? You can start doing it. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's so, people complicate these things, guys. People complicate the ability to build a skill. They're like, well, just, I don't you know, it's just this and that. And it's, just, no, it's, it's really, it's just, a, it's, it's your, it's your level of urgency on the matter. What do you want? It, do you, do you want to be a better communicating spouse, a better leader, a better salesperson? Uh, you know, learn, 
And, and you guys are here. I can't teach you the ability in a one hour call. You guys that are on this call already have the ability or you wouldn't even be here. Right. Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm saying, unlock it, <laughs> get it out, get it out and apply it, apply it. All right. So listen, Goals are a great reality check and they bind us to our strengths and our weaknesses, all right? And goals require us to self-evaluate. Mm. They require us to look in the mirror and go, okay, yep, I'm not doing it right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting in the time. Um, I'm not making enough calls. I'm not, you know, listen, you know how I have a reminder in my phone every day, every day. Remind my wife how much she means to me. Just set a reminder. I may not get around to it every day. I may forget here and there, but I have a reminder. Or I have a reminder, am I committed to the betterment of my staff? Share daily scripture with my staff. You know, set reminders. You know, it, 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 evaluate what it is that you're not doing that you need to do and just start doing it. it it's just that simple. Well, I'm not very good at doing this and uh, you know, I, I, I'm busy in the morning and look at your time, evaluate what you're doing with, with, with your time. You know, just like Jesse said at the beginning, he's, he's gained like five hours of productivity. Are you freaking kidding me? It's insane. Do you understand? That's 25 hours a week. Jesse, you've gained a whole day in productivity. <laughs> That's insane. Um, so, and, and it's easy. People can do it, but they, they psych themselves out. So, be willing to look in the mirror and point the finger right back at yourself and go, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. I own it. I own it. No one else does. It's not your boss. It's not your spouse. It's not your sister. It's not your mom. It's you. It falls on you. And when you, when you can learn to take 100% ownership of everything, okay, this comes out from Darren Hardy and the compound effect. It's 100 to zero. Like if I, if with my wife, if I, if I don't blame anything on her and I take blame for everything, guess what? <laughs> How much easier does that make it? There's no argument, you know, it's, and I'm not, I'm not perfect at this, but we try hard to focus on the problem and not the person, but, you know, think about that, own it, just take it and, 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 you know, how can you get better? Um, the self-evaluation to this is big. It's big and a lot of people hate to, well, I don't that's uncomfortable. I don't want to say that. I Do I really suck at that? Man, I guess I do suck. You know, it's like, and, and, and some people get hard on themselves on this, but that's a big one. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I, I think though that, that self, the self-evaluation, any skill can be learned, you know, and yes, it's uncomfortable learning new skills because you're going to, you're, you're going to suck at them at first, right? You're not going to be good at them at first. You're literally going to be taking losses, but the wins come in taking less of a loss and then less of a loss and then less of a loss. And now, wow, you're actually getting decent at the skill. And now you're starting to take a little mini win, then a bigger win, then a bigger win, but yes. you're never going to get through that stage. If your self-evaluation is outwardly pointed. Boom. You, you know, and here's the thing. If, mm -hmm. uh, Yes, their fault and responsibility are, are two different things. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, we're getting ready to lose my dad pretty soon, any day now. You know, that's not my fault, but it's my responsibility to keep the family together when that day comes. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, I, I think it's super important that, that uh, and that's empowering. When, when you think along those lines, it's just, it's really, really empowering because then you're like, okay. Well, it's like the old thing. I accept the things I cannot change. I change the things I can. And I have the wisdom to know the difference. I would say you have the wisdom to not blame someone else or, you know, deflect blame from you. Oh, it's not my fault. This just stinks. This just stinks. No, the family's going to need a leader when, when that happens. Yes. Not someone that's just sitting around. Oh man, this stinks. You don't know. Someone that's going to step up and, hey, let's talk about his good times. Let's talk about what we learned from dad. Let's talk about the biggest life lesson he told us. I'm actually... I don't mean this in like a weird twisted way, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to bring the family together and it's going to be a great, that, a good time. It's going to bond the family together. That's what's going to be great about it. It's going to bond us together, not put us all in a state of depression. That's, and that's a heck of a perspective, man. Um, and kudos to you for having that perspective. That's tough to do, but that's, that's, you're, you're spot on with it. You're spot on with it. And the other thing too, Jesse, I think is that it, 
um, it reveals to us how much we actually can control in our life as well. Mm. Dude, we can control a lot more than we think we can. You know, I talk to so many young, young entrepreneurs are like, well, my revenue's down and I'm not, I'm not getting enough. And hey, listen here, buddy. That's your fault. That's your control. Get in your freaking car and get out there, you know, just or whatever, you know, any any circumstance that we, we, we have control over those. So, guys, enlighten, encourage and enable and, uh, and, and and take a picture of this. I mean, this is this is big stuff. This is proven stuff um, and how our minds work. This is how our hum- this is how the brain functions. OK, so. I'm always big in, in giving away action steps to implement, to take for you guys to take away and, and, and to, to apply right away. And um, I'm big in, in challenges and, 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 and that, that's what I believe challenge leads to change and, and, and taking the challenge now and owning it now, not tomorrow morning, not, not ninth. Okay. I'll, after I get off here, I'll, I'll you know, I got to do some things around. No, no, no. Right when you get off the call, go through the six steps, okay? Tell the wife, tell the husband, you're going to have to wait a, f- a minute, okay? I'm busy. I'll get to you in about 10 minutes, okay? Communicate it, you know, be nice, but be unreasonable too, okay? Determine your why. What do you want, okay? Why do you do the things that you do? I don't have that answer, only you're going to have it. What, what motivates you? What drives you? What wakes you up in the morning? You're the only one that's going to know that. Maybe you're, maybe you're a single parent with multiple kids. They're your why. You, you have to do everything you can do to provide for these kids. You know, Maybe it's a family member that's just depending on you. Maybe it's, maybe it's a staff of people. You're responsible for all of them. And you, What motivates you? What is a core? You can't say, well, I want to get up because I'd like to get a, you know, I'd like to buy a new truck. No, I'm not talking about that. Well, I'd like to get a new house. Eh, not, no, that's not it. That's not it. I want to leave a legacy for my family. That's what I'm talking about, right? I want to leave something to, to give to my kids. I want, to, I, want my, you know, I want my name. I want my name. I want people to know my name. When people, when people hear me and they hear me talk, they know, well, Michael Clark talks. I listen. You know, what's your why? What do you want? All right, number one, determine it. Write it down, Okay. Paint the picture in your mind of what it looks like every single day. And you need to visualize this on a daily basis, guys. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. I've, I've drilled this into my team's head for years. Listen, wake up in the morning. You want it. Danny's talked about this too. Okay. He wants to, to be uh, financially independent when, when his kids are old enough with their kids and they can all come to Florida and go to his vacation home and he pays for everything and it's nice and there's, and there's laughter and love and fun and, 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 and the family's, you know, he's, I, I love the details of that. That's great yes. visualization. Yes. It's so powerful. It's so powerful to, to visualize that. Okay. Next thing, this is really profound. Watch out. Just write it down. <laughs> what's your why picture what it looks like write it down write it down every single day whether it's your, your dmo your critical task every day write it down okay write it into reality some people write their goals down before they go to bed some people write them down when they get into the office i don't care when you write it down i'm telling you to write it down as soon as this call's over okay i'm telling you to figure out your goals at 805 at 810 at 815 okay urgency, urgency. Now we got to go do, we got to do it now. Okay. Time kills deals, right? Time kills everything, <laughs> mm. you know? <laughs> so keep that in mind. Okay. Time, time kills goals. Every dude, it does. Time kills goals. Thousand percent, thousand percent. So establish accountability. Okay. What happens if you fail? What, what happens to you? What, 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 what are you going to, what are you going to to punish yourself with. Jesse, I love this. You guys, uh, Erica, you guys literally said, we're not going to travel anymore until, uh, until you guys, what was that? When yeah, guys- she, uh, she, Erica wanted to make the next rank in her company and she was just in comfort. She was at the sixth rank, which is great money. She wanted the seventh and she loves to travel, dude. That's her love language. Loves, loves, loves. We're never in the same place ever. It's her <laughs> lovely. So she goes, you know what? 
I'm putting it out there publicly. We're not traveling until I get the seventh rank. And immediately she spoke that into existence. Her mom and dad called her and they're like, hey, honey, we got this trip to South Carolina and her parents never travel. And she's like, oh, and then she's like, hey, honey, it's we're, we're going to do uh, Emily and her, her niece is graduation. We're going to do it out of town for the first time ever. It's going to be so great. So, she, she, man, she, she I've never seen her work. Yeah. From when the yeah. second she did that, because, again, we run away from pain more than we chase pleasure. She she got it. She actually made the South Carolina trip. I couldn't believe it. Dude, it's there's it's so powerful in establishing uh, some ground rules for yourself. And, 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 and holding yourself accountable. Um, it is so powerful. Uh, it's one of the, that's one of the key, key challenges of 75 hard is if, if I miss any one of the, the, the key daily tasks, I have to start over. Do you know how horrible that sounds to me to start over? That's my punishment. Like if I don't drink a gallon of water or get my second workout, that has to be outside or read my book. I have, to, I fail. You know, and in my mind, I could cheat it. I could go, yeah, I did it. I've been doing it, blah, blah, <laughs> right. you know, but that ain't going to work. But establish accountability, okay? Figure out what you're going to do. Seek wise counsel, okay? This is all about getting around those right people. This is all about talking to people that are just, they know more than you. They're better than you. They have, they figured it out, okay? Call it what you want. Michael, uh, well, that's kind of a rude statement. Get around someone who's better than me. Whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> get around people that have what you want. Yes. Get surround. Figure it out. Ask them, hey, this is my goal. Uh, what do you think about it? How can I accomplish it? How would you do it? What did you do? How did you get the house, the car, the marriage, the communication, the business, the whatever? How did you get? How did you become spiritual? How did you find God? Whatever it is, whatever it is. Seek someone that's done it, you know? And then, like I said, celebrate it, okay? Obviously, you can't celebrate tonight, right? You can't do number six tonight. Uh, number five might take you a day to get someone to reply or maybe someone's busy, but these first four steps, you can certainly implement them immediately into your daily, into, your, into, into setting a goal, into your, into your, uh, you know, your daily routine. And, and guys, you're gonna find that when you, when you do these very simple things, and you start winning small daily, momentum is very powerful. And if you can capture the, the small wins, the daily victories that lead to the bigger picture, okay? And, and, and we can talk about big goals later. We can talk about like nasty, like people can't even imagine goals because I've got them, okay? <laughs> I've, got, I've got sick, sick goals, all right? And, 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 uh, and most people are just like, well, that's just, that didn't even make sense. We can talk about those because those are great to have. But these, what I'm talking about here today is what can you set in a day and obtain very quickly in a, in a, a couple of weeks or a couple of months time, okay? Even if it's a daily goal, like today, I'm going to tell my wife uh, how much she means to me. And then you do it and you check it off. And there's a sense of fulfillment there. That's, that's one of the five F's of the Noble Alliance's fulfillment. You're going to feel the fulfillment of accomplishing that goal. Mm, yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I set out to do it. I did it. That felt really good. I want to do it again. You know, it's kind of like the, 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 Sarah, the, the, the what do they call it? The, the endorphins. Oh, uh, yeah, the dopamine. And yeah. yeah, the dopamine rush. And it's just, it's, that's real stuff. That's, that's, yeah. you know, again, that's science. So, um, so guys, I hope this, I hope this helped you. I hope this took some, you, you took a little bit away from this. I would love to open it up. And if anyone has questions or, 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 or. Uh, yeah, Michael, if you want to open it up, I've got the first question. Okay, absolutely. Let me. Uh, so, well, yeah, while you're doing, so we, t we talked about your mom, my mom was the same way. When I've opened my first business, my mom goes, what's your exit strategy? Cause she, and then she sent me a bunch of newspaper articles about how eight out of 10 small businesses fail. And she did it out of love. She, she did that because she literally didn't want to see me eating in a soup kitchen. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but yeah. I was able, and I know your mom, I know Danny's uh, uh, father, all very loving people, but they just, they were not, they were just kind of that necessity driven. You know, they weren't the ones saying, great idea, son, go kill it. You know, but we were able to move out of those environments. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you get off today's call or you're in today's call and you're thinking, man, I do have this goal. I want to launch this business or I want to get into marriage counseling. 
and you're not getting support from an environment you can't get away from. So like a spouse, you know, what do you do if like a spouse out of love, they're not like trying to be goal killers out of love. They just, oh, that's stupid. No, you should, you should never do that. Here's why they got all the data, you know, like any suggestions of how you would combat that? That's a really good question. Um, and, and I kind of wish Danny was here for that too, but I think Jesse, what I would do is, is, is first and foremost, is I would have a conversation. I would go, listen, um, I really, this means a lot to me. Um, I really want to do this. And, and I would really appreciate your support and your help. And when you go to someone and you ask someone for help, it's, it oh, builds that. that person up. Right. They're like, Oh, he needs my, she needs my help. Okay. Instead of going, I'm going to do this. Go screw yourself. Yeah. You know, right. They're going to go. Yeah. Okay. We'll screw off. Right. And in, instead go to them and go, Hey, you know, um, I really like to do this. You know, like with my wife, when we were on our, we were on our trip last week with no kids or our vacation, it's a vacation. Um, I told her, I said, babe, I, I want to do 75 hard again. Um, I'd, I'd really love for you to help me if you could, can we make it happen? And what did she do on Sunday? She meal prepped my food for like five hours. Wow. I mean, wow. I didn't tell her to meal prep. I didn't ask her to meal prep. I didn't demand anything. I said, I could use your help. I'd really like to do this. Right. And to her, she's like, well, my husband needs my help. Um, yeah, of course I'm going to help him. And, and that's, I think, when you go to someone and, 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 you know, if you can't get away from that person in, in, the, in, the, in the immediate is at least, listen, it's a, it's a game. Guys, guys, life's a sale. You got to sell it, baby. Everything's a sale. No, I think that's huge, okay. Ask, yeah. asking for help. I think that's yeah. huge. For sure, for sure. So that's a great question. Yeah, I know when, when Erica, when we first were dating and she launched her business, I was not on board because she's like, I'm doing this. If she would have been like, hey, Jesse, I know you want to be like, can you help me? I really, I, we would have, it would have avoided so many fights. Thousand percent. I was, I was dumb back then. <laughs> I should have supported her, you know, but we were, yeah. call. Uh, Jordan, it looks like uh, Jordan, you're up, buddy. Let me see. Uh, it should be good. Okay. So can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so every year we set goals in our business and to every year our, our, our growth goal is about 75% on top of what we did last year, almost doubling basically. And we, we've several years in a row now, we have made it super close to that but just maybe barely came short. And then the next year we continue to up it again. Do you think it is worse for your psyche and your motivation to continue to set it so far out? Like, should we retract it a little so that we hit it and you get that big win? Or is it better to continue to set that further out goal of, this is what I want to do and then come up a little bit short. Do you get what I'm saying? Is it, is that worse on your mindset and on your motivation to continue to each year you fall just a little bit short, but you still make a growth that you didn't think was even possible. Yeah, dude, that's you, know, a, you get what I'm saying. Absolutely. Jordan, that's a great question. My team and I battled that last year. Uh, the exact same thing. And, um, for me, for, for my particular uh, mindset is it, it almost, it almost makes me mad to do, to try to, to, cause I'm so competitive. I'm like, I'm going to get it now. Now I'm really going to get it. I fell short. I'm going to get it. But we have to think about other people in this process. Not everybody's a lion, buddy. You know, some people, some people just, they're just, they don't have that you know, they're still, they're still really getting it for you and they're working really hard and they're, they're doing their best for you. Um, as a leader to your staff, I think it would be more beneficial to set something that they can obtain and celebrate. Um, for you internally, maybe that's, th that looks a little bit differently where you can have a goal that you're shooting after that maybe no one knows about or that, that your, 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 maybe your, your leadership team is the only people that are, that are after that. But Keep in mind that people people thrive off of complimentary, uh, off of being complimented and being uh, and winning, and and people thrive off of that. And I think if 
if after a time, if you're like, well, we didn't hit it again, you guys did a great job, but we still didn't get it. Uh, after a while, that can be deflating to people. Uh, it's, I don't know. Would you agree, Jesse? I mean, to some guys, it, yeah. it, can, it can. I mean, piss a seventy-five percent increase in business is. I mean, that's the fact that you're doing half that, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean? that's amazing. That that's huge. But uh, I would say maybe you could pick put a five-year plan or a two, a three-year plan with the team. Be like, hey, here is my vision. That in three, five, seven, nine years, we're, we're, we're hit, we hit these benchmarks. Like, I think for Danny to get 5,000 at Easter was like, he said it 10 years ago or something. Yep. You know, uh, but I agree with Michael that I would get something that they can hit that, that, that is uh, obtainable. It stretches them, just exactly like Michael said, stretches them. And it's meaningful to hit, but it's obtainable. So they're celebrating, they're celebrating a big win instead of a narrow loss. Right. And in, in maybe too, Jordan, I don't know, maybe you already do this. I don't know, but, you know, make sure there's a reward of some sort there, a bonus or a, you know, a whatever, whatever you can do. It may not be, even if it's not much. I mean, even if you take them out for a steak dinner or something, just make sure that I think that goes a long way with just saying, I really appreciate Absolutely. what you've done for me. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reward you or, or, or show you my appreciation by doing something for you. So. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other questions, guys? Anybody else, uh, uh, you know, curious about this process and and and, and what it takes? So, um, we've got about three minutes left. I think Jesse, for me, it's sometimes when I do these these conversations, man. Whether it's with you or other people, I I, I kind of fire myself up. So now I'm like, all right, when I hop off here, I need to. I'm going to look at my goals real quick. And yeah. They're there. Same they're legit, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, make sure I'm challenging myself. Yeah, I, I like the fact that they will force you, and especially when you're looking at them, they're gonna force you to self-evaluate. Why Why are these things not happening? Oh, well, you know, we've been, our foot's been off the gas, we've been going out during the week, you know, it, it's gonna give you some self-evaluation. Yeah, dude, thousand percent, thousand percent. So, well, it, it looks like that uh, everybody's uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much good here. Um, Guys, uh, appreciate this. And, and like I said, I, I would love um, some organic uh, growth out of, of, if you guys are getting takeaway from this to make a post or tag us in a story, or I uh, really appreciate just, uh, you know, helping us out with telling people you're getting some, some great, you know, value out of it. If you're not, if you don't, then don't, you don't have to tell people. I mean, just tell people how you feel. Um, but we'd appreciate that. And, and, and thank you guys so much. And, uh, uh, looks like next week, I think it's uh, it's Danny, right? Yeah, next week? we got Danny. Okay. Well, we'll send the invites out later this weekend, guys. And thank you. Thank you so much, Jesse. Appreciate it, All brother. Right. Good night. Thanks, Jordan. See you, everyone. See you, guys.